So the kids that figure this out, they can accomplish it. They, they got good, they parents buy them, they're going, they're dealing with this well, they're well prepared, and they're accomplishing great things. They do really well through that grade school. But then there's, as soon as there's problems, there's difficulties, restraints of how do you solve this problem? Someone's not relating, someone's not doing, things come up. There's a, a social factor in this mental development. It's, it's, and the authority and the, and the needs have changed. And in this period is from seven to 14, you're growing, you're growing into something, you're, you're getting seeds and information other than just from your parents. But you're also seeing the success, the successful potential of your parents' authority or the damage of your parents' authority in comparing to other people and at what you're achieving around you. If a parent's not there, you're out and go to school and you don't have one parent, all the other kids do. If a parent's being really abusive, you're coming up there and you're not insecure, you're not feeling supported and you're afraid of the other teachers coming in. If your parents are supportive and they're working with it, you're being supported, you're going out and you're interacting with the teachers, it's not, a, it's not as a challenging a factor. There's, but that can happen on one level. So there's many layers, there's more layers that start happening in your life from seven to 14. You still have your home life and you still have the school life. And there's still, all your responsibilities are being decided for you. You don't have the choices of what you're gonna do or what you're gonna achieve. Up to 14, even if parents split up, it's not your choice. You're having to adjust with whatever happens. But the ability to communicate, talk to people, share ideas, exchange, friends you have, people you talk to, that was um, 7 to 14. For me, we had an abusive home situation, alcoholic abusive home situation. So um, I may have grown, but it wasn't easy at home. It was no, but school i had challenged the school but i met people i did things it was more adventure outside it, it was it was a relief to be outside of the house and doing things rather than being at home so a lot of my activity was involved in, in adventures and sport in activities and sports and being on being part of teams and that was part of my 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 thing but everyone's going to have their different take on this how this works out but this texture of this Figuring out, you have to go to school, you have to figure out who's here, what's true for this teacher, what's true for that teacher, what do I have to do here, what can I get away with here, what, what's late, what's not late. You're, you're getting this mental development of figuring out how to react and what's right, what's wrong. You're getting the rules. Another level of discipline. Different than the instinctive development from up to seven. And so when you're seeing from the instinctive development to mental development, it's just a phase change, but the actual mechanics of that adjustment authority, like when I put mine, I just remember the gym team tours. I had that being on this gym team, on the old gym team, old guys, big guys. But at the same time, parents were struggling. We were poor. There were other difficulties. And I didn't think about putting those down. I see them a little more clearly now. Um, so you can never know it all, but you can see the pressures are there. You know, we would have had difficulty having clothes or the right equipment for sports or things like that going into school because we didn't have much money. Okay, so that was just a factor. It's just a layer of what I had to, of the texture of what I had to go through building up. It's kind. It's not a social sense, but it's it is in a way because you're getting your bearings as to who fits in, who relates to you, who's the same as you, who's not, who's this, who's that. You're developing this mental capacity to discriminate, to judge the thing, to see what's there, what's not. Then the next big one, and this is a big one, comes from Saturn opposed to Saturn. So at the conjunctions, it's starting things. At the oppositions, Saturn's as far away from itself as it can be. You're at, by the time you get to 14, 14, 15, it's puberty, although it happens technically for a lot of people, it happens a lot earlier. A lot of girls get their periods a lot earlier than that. But basically by 14 is the time where your Saturn's opposing your Saturn. You're starting to see, look at the, parent, the parents around you, the teachers around you, and you're starting to see they have... They've set all these themes for you, and they sometimes work, sometimes don't, but you're at the opposite point from Saturn to your natal chart. You're beginning to see your responsibility, what you, like you see how everybody's fitting, setting things up and you don't necessarily fit into it. You don't necessarily want it. You're, you're 
reacting and there's so much going on in your body and your life. It's not all about just work and responsibility. You got to talk, you're talking to people and then what's next? It's moving from the mental development phase to the sensual development phase from 14 to 21. So out of the, what, the innocence of the first 14 years, relative innocence, then once the puberty comes in, the sexual awareness or there's innocence there too, but people who knows who's taught, who's not, but parents are trying to tell you, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. You have all these rules coming and some of them aren't valid. Some of them are, some are too extreme. You begin to see the weaknesses or the strengths. You become aware of what responsibilities of your parents are no longer valid or what you have to get around. They're there, your parents have all the rules, they're watching their time, but you try to figure out how to get around it. You're, you're naturally at odds with your father or the authority figures you grew up with. And you're looking at the scene, that difference, this is what they want from me, okay, but I gotta figure out what I want. It's, it's not conscious, but it's happening. There is an awareness of the limitations and that there's gotta be more than this. So the minute you add other social disassociations or rejections, you're 14, you're trying to, you're, you're thinking of dating, if you're a guy, you're thinking of, you might be thinking of, you may be just involved in the work or sports, but if you're thinking about some girls and you're trying to relate, the girls are already 14, but they're already relating to the 16 year old boys. It's the girls are matured. We're definitely at the same time for a girl, you're coming up to this period and the awareness, like you could be like that there's responsibility, there's commitments. So there's all kinds of textures, like whether it's male or, this happens to each individual. It's polarized by whether we're in a male or female body. Okay, but the, I think with periods and cycles coming in, women get a little bit more responsible, or you could say really inhibited or insecure first. And then that, in that limitation insecurity, they become more mature than boys who look stupid. You know, we're just playing, not necessarily conscious of it. So um, this distinction between the sexes, between each person, each of us, where we are, the responsibilities, commitments, who we're aligned to, if our parents are difficult or bad or not there, we've been mentally seeing who's there, who's not, to all our, our class friends, and we realize we're fitting in or we don't fit in. And then you have the the teenager angst, oh, kid, I don't fit in here, I'm gonna rebel, I don't wanna be in here, who wants to be part of this, don't tell me what to do. You can get into the negative disassociation for this, but you're seeing, your Saturn has got as far away from, You've got, you, you've sucked up your parents and you've sucked up the beginning teachers and your parents' reactions to it. For 14 years, you became the combination of your parents' egos. The next 15 years, 14, 15 years, you're gonna be reacting to it. Now, if it was really positive and good and constructive, you'll be reacting in positive ways. If it was messed up or not really well or impaired in some way, you're gonna be reacting in impaired ways or reacting to that impairment and realizing I can't just follow that. That doesn't mean you're changing your family situation. You still have these situations that's there. There's still things that don't seem fair. Becoming aware of the limitations of family and school and the impositions being made on you. And at the same time, you're feeling, you're feeling really restricted yourself and not knowing what, else, what you wanna do or where you wanna, where you wanna go. So life's going on, the days are building up, years are going by, things are really, but it's changed the essential development from 14 to 21. Making friends, making intimate friends, you know, like dating in this process, the majority of people in this process are gonna run into their first sexual experiences. And if they don't, so it's, where is the exact standard? Who's to say? We know what we went through. So this structural awareness at 14, 15, the, the puberty, the reassessment, the awkwardness, the difficulties, and the, the reassessing things. Parents see it as kids just get selfish and they get off in their own world. They get disassociated, don't care. But they can't do anything more for the parents. They have to start to try and figure out how do they find things for themselves in spite of all these controls. And if it's been good, they have no trouble going through high school this is this period from 14 to 21, it's high school. And if you, and university, if you go that way, or if you have a kid and you don't get to school or, 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 or you decide to leave school or whatever, like whether you fit in or don't fit in or you're rebelling, you have a positive or negative Saturn, you start 
accumulating experiences that way in that sensual development. Juvenile delinquency is what, 80%, 90% in boys? Because boys are getting rejected all the time. They don't feel they fit in and it's like, it takes time to grow up around these things. Girls have their own side of it. You know, we're still going through these phases and they're polarized as bodies, but as spirits, we're still been alive this much time. We still have to deal with the authority of parents, the rules that are fair or not fair. We have to run into some responsibilities or problems ourselves and then have to deal with the problems. So in a way, you have the first seven years is your family instinctive development. The second, next seven is like, you've got teachers, you've got your, your home, your parents and your teachers and the principal and those, those rules. But from 14 to 21, it extends to jobs, to bosses, to teachers, bosses, and even the law. Okay, so you run into another layer of responsibilities. If you get negative with that Saturn and you're reacting against the way you grew up and I gotta get out on this, or you just get depressed or whatever. Boy, and you take other alternatives, you take an alcohol, you take anything, you're, you're reacting negatively and you're brooding through that. You can't see what's worth working towards or why bother. It, it hampers this development and um, creates disassociative, disassociative situations. As soon as I say these words, as soon as I say it, it's suddenly it's bigger than what I said. I'm just trying to talk into it and weave my way in and out of these type of experiences so you see the sense of this pattern going on and the adjustments that come around it. Your experiences will show you exactly what these adjustments are. Now, these experiences of Saturn to Saturn, they happen to everyone at approximately the same time. Not exactly the same day or same week, but within that year, everyone goes through these things. So this is a standard for humanity. It's the, the age and the speed that we grow up at. We go through our seven year cycles. We grow up in these phases and we have these critical struggle points where we're feeling oppressed or depressed or restricted and we're forming our relationship to dealing with work and responsibility and achieving things and deal. Like in the first, from seven to 14, if you have teachers you don't like teachers, you like you're having to figure out how to get around them. You know, for me, I got scrapped every grade I was ever in for stupid things, mischief, doing things. You know, I have a, an inherent sense that I would never have ever gone, if I was hurting or in trouble or got cut for anything, I would never go to a teacher because they were as much of a threat as my parents. That wasn't really the best upbringing to get to 14 and start going on. So into forming relationships. And meanwhile, my parents were not getting along again and they didn't hold it together that much longer from there. So, okay, lots of different, there's always things that come up, but this process is going on. You'll see your own, you'll sense it. And then you start going on, you want to recapture this. So you have your Saturn structure in your life. And um, this is your growing into it by by 14, you're getting your sensual development. You don't tell me I can't see someone or I like so and so. I can't do this. Or I want to do this. I want to be out to midnight. You got to be in at 10. What? You know, like we got all these authorities of wanting to go out and doing things to relate. You know, the things you don't want your young daughter or your young son to do are exactly the things they want to do. And you're just trying to slow it down or put structure around it so it's not, it doesn't get to extremes.